Church in North Fort Worth. We are Mercy Life Church. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mercy Life Church. My name is Pastor Tristan. I am the senior pastor here. I don't think I have a name key this time, which seems to be the routine lately. Yeah. <laughs> but, well guys, we are in part two of our series. You are not alone. But before then, I would like to give a disclaimer. It's no secret that Young Sheldon has ended. Really sad. But next weekend, well, whenever we, whenever, whatever. <laughs> but next week... Pastor Will is going to be preaching two messages. The first message is going to give quite a bit of spoilers of the recent season finale, Young Sheldon. So if you haven't seen that, we recommend that you watch that and then watch the service. Or if you don't care, watch the service either way. And I believe he is talking about grief. And so I'm very excited about that. But today, we are in part two of our You Are Not Alone mental health series. And today, uh, yes. Oh, that one has felt right. Yay. <laughs> I say that because we realized that last week's message actually was spelled, you are not all one. <laughs> yeah, so something about AI is uh, a lot of our images are generated with AI, and AI doesn't really know how to spell, and uh, we've been missing it. <laughs> yeah, and most of the time I catch it, or Pastor Will will catch it, but then those are some days where we don't catch it, which it's okay. It, we know AI is a little flawed, <laughs> but so title my so today I want to talk about never alone. But first of all, I would like to give a shout out to the veterans and anyone who has fought in the army. We are so thankful for the sacrifice that you have made for us for us to have the freedom. Because without your sacrifice, we wouldn't have as much freedom as we have. But I also want like to remind you that we all have a veteran that laid down his life for us. That was the ultimate sacrifice, and of course, his name is Jesus. So we are so thankful for that. And so let's get on with the message. Before I get into the message, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever felt alone in your life? And if, and if you say no, I'll make sure to pray for you for lying. <laughs> because everyone has felt alone at least one time in their life. You know, but with all the materials and everything we have to be closer to God, how is it that we're alone? But let me, let me tell you something. Or actually, let me ask you another question. Can you be in a marriage and feel alone? Yes. Can you be in a room full of thousands of people at a big event and feel like you're the only one there? Yes, you can. It is very possible. It is so easy to feel alone. Even when we are surrounded by friends and family, you can feel alone. So I want to start off with my first point. My first point is hardwired to be. Now, I'm going to kind of work through it. So let me explain to you what I mean by hardwired to be. And, oh, also another disclaimer I want to give before we get any further into the message is, so Pastor Will's going to preach for two weeks, and then I'm going to finish the series with uh, the final message. I don't know what that's going to be just yet. I have a couple ideas, but I don't exactly know yet. But then I'm going to launch into a four-week series in the month of June called Fear What the World is Missing, which is going to be about the fear of the Lord. So please make sure to tune into that, and I even have a surprise for y'all that I really think you guys are going to like, and I'm very excited for that. So, hardwired to be. What do I mean by hardwired to be? Like, what, what do I mean by that? When you hear the word hardwired, what do you mean? And I really wish I thought about this, but I didn't take a picture of it. But I have a smoke alarm in my room that is literally hardwired into the ceiling, meaning the wires are, there are two parts to it. You got the first part, you got the wires coming down, and then you got the bottom part. It is literally hardwired into the apartment. And I actually talked to my office about that, and they said the reasons, one of the reasons why they do that is after five minutes of it ringing or going off the siren, the um, fire department gets notified right away, which I didn't even think that was possible. I think that's a really cool feature. But so just like that, God created us and he hardwired in us to, to, to do certain things for certain reasons. So number one, he hardwired us to have relationship with God. Relationship with God. We were created to have relationship not just with each other, but also with God. Genesis 2.18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. I don't know why I put that verse in there. <laughs> but God created us 
to have relationship. He created us. That's why he created us, to have a relationship. Well, I meant, I meant to add another verse to that. I don't know why I added that. Um, but next is relationship with each other. We have all. We were also hardwired to have a relationship with each other, and I'm just. Like, I'm not talking about husband and wife, boyfriend girl. I'm talking about f friendship. I'm talking about mother, son, father, daughter relationships like that. God created us for. It. And so there are two definitions I want to give you: fellowship and community. Fellowship is talking to others, interacting with others. And the community is being around others. I, I think that's a good definition of those. Two. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so number two, and this is something that I have struggled with a lot the past couple years, really here recently, because money's, money's tight for a lot of people right now. Actually, I read online that 75% of Americans are struggling right now in the whole United States because of inflation. It's, it's horrible. It's sad. I just read a news story that said that 80% of Americans now consider fast food a luxury. Yes. You know, and I'm going to be honest, I ba I'm barely able to pay for myself to have good food. I'm having to survive on kind of the kindness of people. And so my second point is the Lord will provide. No matter what you need, God will provide it. Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Matthew 2.25. Now, I'm not going to read all of this. I am going to read a little bit of it, and then I'm going to summarize it because it's a lot to read. But it is on the screen, so you can go back and read it. By the way, Will, how do the lower third look this week? Great. Great? Okay, good. Uh, some of you have watched the Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People, and if you haven't, I recommend you do watch it. But you may have noticed the lower thirds were kind of, some were good, but then some were bad. And that was actually my bad because I was making it late at night, super tired. Um, really exhausted, um, so that was my bad, but hopefully this week is a lot better uh, from what I can hear it is, so I'm happy. So starting in verse 25 in Matthew 6, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is, is not life more than food, and is the body more than clothes? And so basically what this verse is saying is there's so much more to life than just what we're going to wear or what, what we're going to eat, what we're going to do. And there's so much more to that. You know, there's so much more to life than worrying because God is going to provide. Matthew 6, starting in verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So if you seek God first and you give everything to god i don't just mean like all your attention all your attention i mean everything your finances your attitude your love your adoration everything and finance is probably the number one issue a lot of christians have and we're going to get into that one of these days but pastor will has got into it a little bit but we are going to do a series on it one day uh, because it is so important and it's just so sad that so many people believe tithing is even biblical like are you serious <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. So many people believe that tithing is not biblical. Um, so Proverbs 10, 3. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts thwart, the craving of the wicked. Barely, I have been barely surviving recently. And I don't mean like I'm on the edge of death. I haven't been on the edge of death. I, have, it's, I haven't been that bad. And, I don't, and God won't let me get that bad. I know he won't. But I have been barely been able to afford rent. I've barely been able to afford food, like I mentioned earlier. It's a miracle that I am even still able to live in this apartment. In this apartment, when I first moved in, I thought of this as a luxury, you know? And, you know, I tell people all the time, my cats have more food than I do. <laughs> like, one day I might just have to eat their food to survive. <laughs> and I really hope it doesn't get that bad. <laughs> but so next thing I want to talk about is he is always near by he i mean god god is always near you are never too far away or too far gone for god to be near now there are two god okay i don't let me, let me just get into it so there are two definitions i'm going to give you and these are big churchy words that you hear a lot omnipresent and then omniscient so omnipresent means 
present everywhere at all times. And then omniscient means knowing everything. So God is there at all times and he knows everything at all times. So for that reason, he is always near. And verse, not verse five, <laughs> uh, point five, he will not forsake you. Now, something that I've actually realized, and this is uh, Pastor Josh from Lake Point Church pointed this out in the recent sermon he preached. If you're watching, Josh, hey, thanks for watching. <laughs> but something he pointed out was, I believe in Acts 7 is when Thomas dies. Is that correct? Okay, well, I believe it's in Acts 7. But when Jesus was on the cross, something that Jesus said was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And what he also said is, I am, give, I, am, I am giving you my spirit. Receive my spirit. Thomas said those exact same things. And... Oh, that's Stephen. Stephen, not Thomas. Stephen, Stephen, my bad. Thomas Stephen. went to India. Thomas went to India. Okay, Stephen, my bad, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's not in my notes, by the way. <laughs> Better. Yeah. Okay. And so, Matthew 27. I will. I'm going to need your help on some of these words. <laughs> now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. That's like three hours. Wow. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. You know, a lot of people did believe that Jesus was Elijah reincarnated, you know, and I'm not going to get into that, though. <laughs> but so why did Jesus say that? Why did Jesus say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Same reason we say, God, why have you forsaken us? Because we were because he was in pain. He was suffering. He literally had the flesh torn from his body and nails through his uh, wrist. You know, actually, a really cool fact that I mentioned during our Easter service is you cannot put a nail through the palm. So when you see photos of Jesus on the cross and, and the nails are through his palms, those are not biblical. And it's actually more than just not biblical. It is just not right at all because this the skin is too soft. It would literally shred and then the nail would just go straight through and cut it in half. Uh, I don't know how anybody found that out. I'm guessing they had to crucify somebody like that to find out. But it is that's some knowledge for you <laughs> so many people have had bad experiences with their earthly father and do not want to trust anyone any other male figure some people have had bad experiences in the church but just let me ask you a question if you go to mcdonald's and you get you ask for a cheeseburger and they give you a chicken sandwich and you go to another McDonald's and they give and they get you your order right. But I'm what I'm trying to say is not every not every McDonald's is like the other McDonald's. Just because God or not God, just because you had a bad experience in the church, does not mean that God forced the bad experience upon you. That does not mean that that experience is from God. Just like that, not every church is a bad church because, like I've said before, He will not forsake you. Isaiah 41 10 fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand then it says 28 15 behold I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have performed I have promised you. God keeps his promises. We humans may not keep our promises, but God does. Psalm 94, 14, for the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. First Kings 8, 57, the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us or forsake us. You get the point. <laughs> Those are like four or five verses all saying the exact same thing to make a point. Now, in closing today, I would like to talk about a verse that many people know, but I'm going to explain it in a way that you may not have heard it, but unless you've watched Pastor Will's message on it before. But my final point is cry out. Sometimes we just need to cry out 
to God. Matthew 14, 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Now let's go skip down to verse 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and be and beginning to sink he cried out lord save me jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him saying to him oh you of little faith why do you doubt and when they got into the boat the wind ceased and those in the boat worshiped him saying truly you are the son of god now, I want to point out something really quick before I make my point. I love how in here it said, and they got in the boat and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Now, does it say anything about music when it said they worshipped him? No. Does it say anything about song or anything like that? No. It said, truly, you are the Son of God. Worship isn't all about music. It can be. Worship can be music, and most of the time we think of worship as music, but it doesn't have to be. But the point I want to make in here is crying out to God could be a form of worship if we just make it. If you are in a tough place right now and you feel like you are alone, because trust me, we've all been there before, then just simply just cry out to God and just say, God, I, I need you. I want you and I need you, Lord. And I want to be close to you because the only way we are going to not be alone is if we draw near to God. So right now, I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to cry out to God and express your love and your need for him. If you need more time, please stop the video and take more time. This could be the time in your life where everything changes because all it takes is that one moment and God can change everything. Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just cry out to you and we say that we need you. We need your love. We need your guidance. We need your protection, Lord. So, Lord, help us to be your children and help us to have faith like a child and to call on you when we need you the most. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, before I finish it, I would like to talk about something that God just put on my heart earlier today. Next month is the month that most Christians have been dreading for the past, what, long, 10, however long it's been. Christians have dreaded the month of June. Because the month of June, the world takes their attention off of Jesus and puts it on man. And... What I am talking about is Pride Month, where the world, well, the United States, I don't want to say the world, the United States celebrates the LJTBQ community, the homosexual community. And what I just want to say to every Christian and every minister and every person who is dreading the month of June, don't dread it. Be happy. Be happy that those people are that far lost because that means those are more people that the church needs to step up and save. So it is time as the church and as the body of Christ to stand up and have pride in what we believe. And what we believe is the victory is already here. You hear people always say, oh, worship for the victory, fight for the victory. But there's no reason to fight for the victory because we already have the victory. And so let's not focus on pride as people centering themselves, but let's focus on God and let's ask God to give us the pride that we need because pride doesn't have to be a bad thing but when it's towards when you're thinking of yourself and not Jesus then it becomes a bad thing and I've I made a Facebook post that sounds similar to everything I just said so if you would like to hear more about that go to the church's group and the page um, but other than that guys we we can't just let the enemy win you know, every time we get mad and we get angry, we're letting the enemy win because God is a God of self-control. And when you lose your anger, you lose that self-control. So let's not be angry, but instead let's pray for the lost. Let's pray for the people who are celebrating themselves because clearly they are lost and clearly they need to know God's love above all other things. 
And so, yes, like I said, month of June, I am going to be preaching about the Holy Fear, and I am very, very excited about it. It's been a series that I wrote about uh, six, seven months ago, and I'm so excited to finally preach it. And you're going to be hearing a lot about our good friend, John Bevere, so we are very excited. And But other than that, thank you guys so much. And like I said, next week will be a spoiler for Young Shodan, so make sure that you are caught up or make sure you don't care too much about that show. Other than that, this has been Mercy Life Church. Thank you so much for joining us.